Welcome into hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio. I'm Ravi Lula. Andrew Rogers here with me. We are live from the H&H Chevrolet stage at Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. We're on AM 590 ESPN Omaha and ESPN Tri-Cities. And we are joined now by our friend, Brian Christofferson from Husker 24-7. BC, how are you this morning? What's up, BC? BC, you there? I'm here, here now. Sorry, guys. I got, I got you now. <laughs> no worries, BC. Uh, obviously, let's start with the big Nebraska news of Grant Bricks committing to the Huskers. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. Obviously, one of the highest priority guys for Nebraska in this class. I, I guess just kind of talk to us about how uh, how big this is for them, not only as you know providing reinforcements at a a uh, really critical spot, but just kind of as a recruiting win and what that means for Coach Rule and staff as they head into year two. Well, he's not technically an in-state recruit, but he's might as well be. I mean, he's, sure. he's just across yeah. just across the border. So he's one of those um, where you don't take it for granted um, anymore uh, with recruiting. You got to really fight, and they they had to on this one. There were time there were twists and turns where you didn't quite know where Grant was going to lead us. Um, no fault of his. He was really a, he's really a guy who I don't think w there was sort of drama because it hadn't been announced, but he actually wasn't a guy who went out of his way to be like, oh, I'm leaning this way. Now I'm leaning that way. Everybody else was just sort of <laughs> guessing. Um, so, well, that's kind uh, of too, right, BC. I mean, that's kind of the job. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it is. Um, but it, but from his end, he was he was just kind of quiet about it up until uh, the end. So. It's, it's a big get, though. Um, I know that there's some thought um, he was the, the top lineman Nebraska, I think, sought after in this cycle. And that includes some five star type names that we uh, maybe saw visit and things like that. I, I, I believe they thought Grant Bricks um, was the best guy they could get um, that was out there after some of their early commitments. So the, they're, I'm sure, ecstatic about this one. Um, they probably knew this was in the works for a while now, but uh, to have the announcement out of the way, it was a nice boost on a night where Nebraska also loses who I think is a really good player in Carlo and Jones, which we might get to. But um, so that's there's recruiting for you. The ups and the downs, you get one, you lose one. Um, but uh, Bricks is a big deal. No doubt about it. Uh, BC, let, let's get to that Carlin Jones decommitment right now. I know that's a guy that a lot of people in this class were really high on. His recruitment really started to pick up as of late. Um, what do you think happened there? I mean, is it as simple as, you know, Mike Elko comes into Texas A&M and, and maybe makes a push on him? Or or what do you think happened with, with Carlin Jones? Um, I don't know if it's that simple, but it's something you got to consider with this. Um, I think that Elko... Uh, move to AM is going to make it, uh, you know, more of a challenge down there. I think he's really well, he is really well received um, by the Texas high school coaching community and a lot of uh, the schools there. So uh, maybe this is a case where we see that right away. Um, you know, Ohio State's been kicking the doors on him and kicking the tires on him and all this stuff. So um, Carlin Jones, I thought, was like one of the top three players Nebraska had committed in this class. So you're not going to see me sugarcoat it. I don't think Nebraska did anything wrong. Um, and in fact, you're playing great defense this year. That was a side of the ball you'd have to say uh, would impress somebody with what's gone on. Um, but it's just a deal where I think a, a, as the season got on, um, other teams saw this kid's pretty good. You know, like he's he's one of the better recruits, I think, out there. I think he's too lowly rated, to be honest. So I'm not surprised it was elbows out by the end for him. Um, it's just one of those deals where you're on a guy early, you see it maybe before others, but then everybody sees it and it, it becomes a, it becomes a test in December and that we're we're now reaching that stage uh, with a few guys, maybe. Uh, BC, one more and then I'll let Andrew jump in here. No, it's OK. Um, <laughs> you guys just talk. I like listening. <laughs> um, the with Carlin Jones, do you think there was any factor at all that he looked at last year's defensive line class? You've got three guys that have already played two guys that were impact players this year <clears throat> and another guy in Maverick Noonan coming off an injury that they really like plus guys coming back. Do you think he looked at it and was like, eh, there might not be room for me there for a little bit. Plus I've got all these other really good offers. Like, do you think that played a role at all? I, I can't say that. And 
having um, seen his interviews and what he's about, I kind of doubt it. Um, that's just my initial take. Uh, it's a fair question because um, the depth is good there. So if there's a spot where you could um, lose a recruitment and you feel like, okay, there's still a lot in the cupboard, this would probably be the area for Nebraska. Nonetheless, Man, he's a, I think he's going to be a really good player. It's a it that it's a tough one. Um, it, it was one of those that the Grant Bricks announcement I think helps, you know, and um, because everybody's sort of pointing their attention toward that. You want to look toward the sunshine more than the clouds. But uh, when when that one came out, it didn't shock me by any means because it felt like something could happen. But um, it, it kind of evened out the night's uh, activity for Nebraska recruiting, as far as I was concerned. BC, um, similar to recruiting, but more in line with the transfer portal with this question. No Husker has made their way into the portal just yet. Now, that was what I read yesterday. Now, I, I don't want to say I could have missed something, but I'm going <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm to stick with what, what I just said there. It'd be crazy to believe, though, that day will never come, although Coach Rule had a lot of conversations with these guys um, over, over this week, and we'll have continue to have more with, with the guys on the team. Are you surprised at all right now that uh, no member of the team has entered yet? Um, not yet. Um, I mean, I think it's there's going to be some of that, of course, because that's the era we live in. Um, they actually need some of it numbers wise, probably, but I don't think there's going to be a ton of attrition, Andrew. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, I guess the reason I'd say that is there's so many young guys who are just getting started here. Um, now there, the, the difficult part is those guys sometimes who redshirted, who you didn't see at all. And it's a, it's a, it's a long season when you don't play at all and you're used to being the man, right? Like when you come from high school and you're a three star, four star, and, and you don't get out there, those are the guys you always got to stay in touch with, with throughout the season and keep challenging and keep thinking, uh, keep them thinking like, here's what's next for you. You got to see the big picture here. Um, and I think they did a pretty good job with that, especially with the four game rule. We saw some guys, um, you know, that they would kind of mix in and get, they'd at least get their toes in the water this season, or there was a thought they could play. And so that kind of kept them on edge, which is good. Um, it's disappointing. Those guys don't have the bowl practices now as sort of a distraction and a chance to develop a spring ball before spring ball, basically. Uh, you know, last week when rule said, if you cut the program open, he said, you would see, I think that it's really healthy. And he said, I'm, I'm really angry about the record, but I couldn't feel better about where it is health wise. I'm inclined to believe like when we talk about the portal and guys, you know, sticking with it here for the most part, that that um, is going to play out to what he said. But we'll see. You know, you do, we, there's going to be a few guys, I'm sure, that pop in there. And um, I just don't think it's going to be a mass exodus or anything like that. Um, I think a lot of guys um, do like what's going on in the program right now, despite the record. But uh, the, the proof will come in the next month, a month and a half. BC, uh, I'm curious and i'm always i i know this has become a much more complicated question with the uh nil scholarships quote unquote that people get and things like that and the the numbers being maybe a little bit more fluid than they've ever been at least since the uh 85 scholarship cap got put in place but um with 26 uh hard commits as as it were in this class currently um, early signing period just mm -hmm. around the corner. How how big do you think this class gets, both from a high school level and, I mean, do you have like a number in mind that you're thinking of transfer portal, or you think they're going to be real targeted in who they go after? Um, I don't have a number in mind, and I but I do think they're going to be real targeted in who they go after. I I think you know a couple of weeks ago, Rule said, um. I want this to be a development program. Basically, he has reiterated, I don't want this to be a place um, that's portal dependent. Um, that doesn't mean you don't um, accentuate what you have or find the spots where you're low one person. We can think of a position, I bet, where Nebraska could use somebody. Um, <laughs> or a couple of <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's, there's spots where, yeah, Captain Obvious says you gotta you gotta look really hard to see what's out there at least, um, and I think that's one of the questions for me as a press conference today 
is to see what he's going to say about the QB spot in particular. That's the one everybody's talking about the most. And like, um, how does he feel about the guys who are there still technically right now? And um, who, uh, you know, how, what, what's he going to say on the record as of today about portal pursuits at that position and portal pursuits in general? But I think he's going to kind of go back to what he said a couple weeks ago, which is we he will say and some people shake their heads. Some will nod. Um, I think we've got guys in this program who can help us win, you know, and it's time to develop them. And that's the type of program they're they're going to be largely with with some just uh, parts you kind of add to the plate um, here and there, but not uh, making it your whole deal. So I don't know what that number is. Um, is it like five? additions maybe but uh i i wonder i wonder if it if if it's uh that or lower um i i really don't think that's going to be um as big as it is some other places but uh it'll be interesting to see if how, how right or wrong we are on some of this stuff we're talking with brian christopherson a husker 24 7 uh bc you mentioned that quarterback spot i'm not going to ask you to predict what you think they'll do mm -hmm. but if you were in that room and making those decisions what would you want that quarterback room to look like next year um assuming i'm assuming jeff sims is going to move on at some point but you've got daniel kalen coming into this class it's presumably chubba and heinrich harburg will be back what would you want that room to look like outside of those guys um i want at least one addition and it's got to be someone that's well vetted that you've you've you know, you, you don't know for sure what's going to happen. You can never predict the future. Um, I truly believe they they had a lot of high hopes for Jeff Sims last year, but it was a miss. You know, there's no other way to say it. Um, it, it just was a, a very tough year for Jeff, who was a very good teammate by all accounts and everything. But, um, you know, just the, the season went off the tracks for him right away. And I'm with you, Ravi. I don't think, um, you know, Jeff, with what happened, I think from his standpoint, um, the, the mental part to overcome would be really something, you know, after what he went through this year uh, with, with some of his games. I think Chuba changed the conversation a little bit about himself the last couple of weeks. That doesn't mean he's like the favorite or anything like that. But I think if you go back to early November, there were people like me who weren't even really thinking about him in 24 or beyond because we had uh, um, 2022 20, Chuba in our heads and what that looked like. <laughs> And I thought there was improvement there. So he's a guy you maybe say, let's let's go look, see what that looks like in competition. Harburg the same way. Can you really develop in the passing game? But make no mistake, you've got to spice up that competition and you've got to have someone that, that is a target that those guys have to chase down, I think, um, to, to move this forward. Because um, this is the ultimate team game. But if you are lost at that position, um, yeah, we lost there, there. There's three or four games, I think, that were that were put on the floor this year because of it. So, uh, you know, you, you, you got to find the right guy there. Well, speaking of the right guy, BC, uh, I'm sure you've scanned over the quarterback portal list. Who pops off the page for you, not only as a top portal target across the board, but a realistic get for Nebraska? That's a tough one, Andrew. Um I'm, I got to go through it more thorough. I'm not, I don't have a lot of great names yet. I do know, you know, yesterday you see uh, the, the kid who had started his career at Baylor, who wants a seventh year is in the portal and someone like Bohannon. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, I mean, USF. Cause yeah, he I mean, started being, under coach rule. Well, he, he started in 21 at Baylor. And uh, I'm glad you came up with a name because my brain was completely locking on me with this name. Um, he backed but, up. I think he backed up Brewer in 2019. I think. Yeah, I think yeah cool. he didn't. He didn't start. I don't think he started for Rule, but then he did get. You know, he started at the end at Baylor after they had left, and then uh, had some success after he transferred. Um, I don't know what that connection's like. That's one of those where you just you see like, oh, that adds up. You know, to that, and he's a veteran, maybe. Uh, but I, I think that you got to do a deep search and there's probably others that aren't in the portal yet that are, are going to pop in there. So it's almost like, let's just see what the next few days, uh, what the full list looks like. Um, but it's got to be somebody um, 
who's really got it upstairs. You know, I don't think this is about arm talent or this, he can make all this throw, these throws and that throws, but it's, can, can it be that guy who, when you look at the film, he's like, this guy sees the field. He really processes things. He has, as Mario Verdusco used to say, the quick blinker. Um, you're looking for that type of player. Um, and maybe he's shown some clutch genes, you know, in some of these games, like you find a guy where you're like in the last five to 10 minutes, how does he play? Because so much of this, let's face it, comes down to that. Like, think about what we're saying about Chubba Purdy even right now, if he throws a touchdown or they, they beat Maryland, uh, even if it's 13 to 10 or any leads a drive in one of the other two games. I mean, so you got to find that guy who in those, those final minutes also shows it on film in a game or two or more that he has that sort of knack for performing in those moments. BC, uh, away from the quarterback spot. Uh, you know, we mentioned being targeted in the transfer portal. I think one of the other places that Nebraska will like might likely look, obviously you've got wide receiver. Um, but I think maybe the one place on the defense that you're not a, hundred percent sure what that looks like is maybe linebacker is that a place you could see them trying to address in the portal as well i think it's possible i think middle backer you look at you know rhymer's gone and we we're gonna hear what john bullock's situation is um because he walked on senior day as did gifford so that could that could be interesting to follow um you know i think makai bear is a guy on the roster now who could take up more snaps there uh but it's that it's good to raise that question, I think, because if you're talking about one spot on the defense, it's probably there. It's probably that linebacker spot. Um, and then I, on offense, of course, you know, you'd love to add like a, a big dog receiver to the mix with the young crew, somebody who's put up a lot of data already. Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe a running back, you know, it'll be will they want to just run it back um, with what they have? Emmett had it was a nice story, but. You know, Gabe and Ramir coming off very tough injuries. Uh, Quinton Ives, we didn't see enough of to really form an evaluation. So I don't know. I, I'd be fine, too, if they if they had one more guy there uh, to add, add to that competition. But as you said in the earlier question, um, you've got to uh, you got to get the numbers right, too. You know, you don't you can't just have, have 112 scholarship guys or whatever on your roster. And I, I do know there's NIL ways to to work around it and stuff like that. But um, at some point it, you probably have to be a little tighter in some of your decisions numbers wise. BC speaking of this, this season. Um, and I know I, I brought this point up a couple of weeks ago and this was after the loss at Michigan state. And then you saw the loss against Maryland. And I put together this, this hypothetical scenario that unfortunately came true of Hey, if Nebraska ends their season without a bowl appearance at five and seven, after having five wins with four games to go, would you consider that disappointing or would you still consider it a success because uh, a staff, a first year staff got to five wins in year one? In your eyes, do you consider the 2023 football season a success or no? Um. My, my, it's like, if it's one of those where you got to say yes or no, I'd say no. Cause I, I have said all along, I thought they needed to get to a bowl game to, to call it that. Um, now is it one of those answers where I hope it's an essay question on the test and I can really <laughs> break it out for two pages? Yes. Um, that's, that's what I would want you to do as a professor is to bring it to me that way, because I, I feel like it's like basically my, uh, my example would be the first movie in a trilogy, right? Where you, you thought like two thirds of the way it w- through, it wasn't bad. And then you, everybody kind of walks out when the end credits flash. They're like, man, what was that at the end? And you're kind of disappointed. It leaves everyone in this sort of like bewildered state. And then you're like, well, when you're asking your friend, like when's the second movie come out? And it's like, oh, it's like 10 or 11 months from now, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, um, so then you'll see like, okay, maybe the second one, really connect some dots here and you see that they they really looked under the hood about these spots that weren't working well and they fixed them and they got the quarterback spot right and and all that and then you look back at the first one and you're like oh it makes more sense to me now how it all works together um so i think that's possible i really do and i think there's good things that happen this year too i think they're developing players better than they have around here 
um, and in specific examples like Bryce Benhart uh, was a guy who for four years didn't feel like there was traction. And now, you know, he played pretty well this year. And there were certain other guys I thought um, showed signs that we didn't even think we're going to be on the roster, like Makai Bayer is an example. So there's there's good stuff there. I I think the difficulty Matt Rule and the staff are dealing with is whatever he says would have been accepted um, more if the frost era hadn't happened. And that by that, I mean, whenever he has a quote or something where he's like, we just got to get four or five points better, we're close or whatever. You guys know what happens. The conversation always goes back to, yeah, I've heard that for five. <laughs> yeah. Years. One score losses, yeah. this, that, and the other. And it's not really rules fall and stuff to like think the way they're thinking or say what they're saying, but what's year two for them is year eight for everybody else and the sins of others and the failings of others and how those failings were explained now when it, when it happens currently. And if they're explained in any way, the same way as like, this is what we're going to do to fix it. People are going to immediately be skeptical of it. And that's fair for the fans I'm saying. Um, but that that's where it gets a little tricky for I, rule right now. Um, Cause whatever he says this off season is going to be, I think just sort of like, yeah, well, we'll see, you know, cause it's, it's just been, it's, you know, the, the games at the end of this year just were reminders sort of, of like 21 and some of those other seasons. And um, so that it's, that that's where we got an interesting situation. I would say no though, because they, we, if they were to your question, because if they were practicing for bulls right now, we'd be making a huge deal about, Oh, they got to six or seven wins, whatever it was. And they get all these practices, look at this thing. And it's such a bottom line business when you don't get those and you, and you're still stuck on the outside and you're still sort of the butt of jokes for having this bull drought. That's tough for a proud fan base. And I understand that part too. So that's why I'd say no as my answer. If I'm not allowed an essay, <laughs> even though you, I, was, spoke I like think you essay. gave us one anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I gave you a five page essay. I think. Yeah, You know what? I'll put a smiley face just like my teacher in high school used to do on things like, Hey, you tried. Here's an 80. Uh, <laughs> BC, your trilogy talk. I was, I got sidetracked in my head a little bit here. I, you described basically my exact experience with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, like yeah. Fellowship of the Ring, like 90 minutes in, I was like, oh, pretty good movie. And then there were was like an hour and a half left. And I was like, there is a lot of walking in this film. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then the next two, I was like, great movies. Love it. I'll watch the extended edition. So I'm hoping next year we've got the two towers for Matt Rule and company. That's what we're crossing our fingers for. Yep. Yep. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, BC. Appreciate you. Yep. Uh, that's Brian Christopherson from Husker 24-7 on the War Horse Sportsbook Hotline. Make sure you go to the War Horse Casino in Lincoln or to Horseman's Park here in Omaha to place your bets. The best place in Omaha to place your sports bets. You can do that in person in Lincoln or in Omaha. War Horse Sportsbook. No bets, no glory. If you're feeling lucky, take me with you so that I can get lucky too, please. Yeah, I had a rough week with my picks, so I might have to, I gotta have to regroup before I head out to War Horse again. Uh, we're halfway through the show. More Hornet Sports Radio coming up next. We will be back.